Hey everyone, Daniel Woodham here from Squad Leader Review. I just wanted to take a few minutes in this video and kind of review uh, how I organize my scenarios, how I organize my counters, uh, how I take care of my maps. Uh, a big part of Advanced Squad Leader is the actual organization of the game because it's ever expansive and you're always trying to find the best ways to utilize space and organize at the same time. In addition to that, during the actual harder parts of the pandemic, uh, when there, we were on kind of like total lockdowns and there was nothing going on, it was like a really great hobby to just kind of consume time and take care of some elements of anxiety for me. So that was like really super helpful. In addition to that, uh, organization and actual research is a big, big part of this game. Sometimes we don't talk about that enough, so I'm hoping if I post this video about how I utilize my space and how I organize my counters and my maps, it will kind of encourage people to talk about that as well and maybe make other videos that show how they kind of do it because it's there's no real right way to do it and it's always interesting to me. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to it. So, um, I'm trying to give you all a view of my space and what I have to utilize. As you can tell, I actually play out of my garage. I generally don't, like, play squad leader here per se, but I'll do video games, work on electronics, and I do a lot of the organization here. Uh, the space is incredibly small, so I have to do a lot of modularization to make things work. So with that in mind, I'll turn the camera off again real quick and we will kind of zoom in on, well, I don't need to turn it off. We'll just kind of take a look here. And uh, this is where the squad leader stuff kind of lives right there. And uh, we'll go in and take another look. So this shelf that you're looking at right here, this is my advanced squad leader shelf. This is where my scenarios live. This is where a good deal of my maps are. As you can see, I actually have the original Avalon Hill Advanced Squad Leader rulebook, and then I have the MMP Second Edition. So the Advanced Squad Leader rulebook from Avalon Hill is actually what holds my Chapter H, known as Weapons Ar Armaments, and then I have the ASL Second Edition rulebook that I actually use when I play. Uh, a couple months ago, actually all that was in a huge 1000 plus 3 ring binder. I decided it was better to just kind of segment what I had, uh, making it easier to reference and organize. So here in mass is just part of all my counters. I actually use um, bead holders from Walmart. Uh, they were $9 a pop. Now they're probably around 10 to 12 due to inflation. They hold 32 uh, separate containers each, which is ideal for a lot of different armies for Advanced Squad Leader. You can actually see here that I've labeled on the side what is what. The reason I did this is um, I wanted like a lot of uniformity, especially when I need to quickly grab stuff and go. Or if I'm traveling in a car, I want to know what I need to grab so I can have it all together and just be done with it. You know, the more time I have to spend organizing is always less time you have to play. So I'm a big believer in thoroughly organizing everything that you can as long as you've got the time, space, and money to do it. As I mentioned earlier, everything is kind of a module in a very, very small space. So if I'm gonna show you guys these counter holders, I'm gonna to have to clean some stuff up real quick. All right, so what we're looking at here are my actual Soviet counters. As you can tell, I had a label maker at a previous job that was pretty amazing. And I can just look at the scenario and I can look individually at the tank or armored fighting vehicle that I need and I can just go ahead and put it in there. So there are the, um, Concealment markers right there. Everything is right where it's supposed to be, um, organized accordingly. Uh, this is one of my better ones that I did. Here we have the German German armored fighting vehicles uh, listed in their 32 um, counter holder. You know, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think maybe we could have done with like less German armor. I'm not sure when they updated Beyond Valor if they added more tanks in or not. I haven't gone and like compared the Chapter H notes between both but I think it'd be a fine game <laughs> with a little less to organize because even with this current system, I feel like down, down the line, I'm probably gonna buy four or five more of these counters, counter holders at about 12 bucks a pop and get this a little better organized. But once again, like if you need, you know, the, Pan the Panzer VD, it's just right there. You don't have to look around. You don't have to waste time. 
what we're looking at here kind of zoomed out is my entire uh, Cold War Vietnam advanced squad leader um, selection because I know not too many people are probably going to have an interest in playing these with me. I have combined a lot of the allied forces together whenever possible. Um, this just kind of allowed me to save some space. I kind of want to show some other things of highlights. So uh, the Vietnam War includes helicopters. So I've actually taken um, all the helicopter chits from all the critical hit um, games and just kind of put it into one uh, modular thing. I also own French Algeria. So the French helicopters uh, from that war are uh, and conflict are also, you know, in here. Uh, once again, the um, I wanted to show this actually, which is really uh, I think is a great way to organize. Is you can see uh, my single man counters. I have two of them. I have single man counter minus and single man counter plus. So when you need those from the scenarios, you can always find them. And then I have my heroes as well, all um, listed to be easily found if they're required in the scenario or if you get one in heat of battle. So I think is a really smart way to do it. Once again, you know, the more organized you are with your counters, the less time you have to spend trying to set stuff up for a scenario. Um, over here, you just kind of got a lot of stuff that came with the Vietnam scenarios and in particular, Dinh Bien Phu. Um, if I can find them real quick, I have more M42 tanks than uh, I know what to do with. Uh, they are in, uh, they're Played a heavy, heavy part in the Vietnam War all the way up near the end. Um, if anybody wants some, I could probably mail them out to you. So here's a selection of some of my maps. So every time I get a new advanced squad leader module, before I even kind of take the counters apart or anything like that, or separate the new chapter H or supplemental rules that come with it, is I go to Office Depot and I pay the money and I usually get a heavy cardstock lamination. Uh, the reason I do this is I have animals, I am clumsy, I spill coffee, uh, things happen and with this kind of plastic shielding, you know, this is kind of hundred dollar paper in a way. I don't really have to worry about, about it being damaged. I generally set up and organize things out of a garage. This guarantees like no moisture damage or anything like that. I have a cat who likes to play around sometimes. So this, you know, guarantees that it's going to be good to go. Um, like I said, I've collected a lot of maps for some of you more um, players that have just um, done the older squad leader stuff. Some of this might look particularly interesting to you. I've kind of just shuffled them at random, so I can't name the numbers. I do know I just picked up Rising Sun, and I think the, although the maps are like spatially the same for um, the MMP release and the Avalon Hill release, they are very just different looking maps. Uh, they have a whole different like kind of feel and, and vibe to them when, when you get a hold of them. I think in here, um, I actually do have a um, uh, uh, old Avalon Hill map. I'm going to see if I can shuffle down to it real quick. Yep, here it is. Um, so this is the old Avalon Hill one, uh, map 37. I couldn't get this laminated, obviously, because it's got the old high quality card stock. I just actually got some lamination tape um, and got it on there, worked pretty well. Uh, this is actually from the Circle of the Wagons, the uh, destruction of French Mobile Group 100. This is kind of where the Viet Minh were allowed to go and I think uh, go up and attack the French. Uh, I played the French in that one, I just got completely destroyed, it was great. All right, um, what you're looking at here, uh, once again laminated, are some critical hit maps. This one here is actually for the Arab-Israeli wars. I'm having trouble figuring out exactly, you know, how I want to stack these and organize them because they're all different sizes. I'm not sure if this was done for legal reasons or production reasons. I know Denby and Fu, for instance, from Critical Hit kind of has the standard um, geomorphic map size for advanced squad leader. This stuff's all different and all and it's all different sizes. So it's very hard to kind of compartmentalize. What I've done is actually taken these and I actually put the individual laminated sheets behind the scenario books. And that's how I'm keeping them organized for now. As it gets larger, um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that moving forward. Uh, this one here is on French Algeria. It's a little more similar in size, but once again, um, it's a little awkward. See, it's, it's a little longer than this one, so you can't really just evenly stack them on top of each other. Uh, this one here came from the newest critical hit uh, annual, and once again, we are dealing with just like three different sizes. Uh, I really like this one. I think this one applies for a scenario in case on. If I ever get the time after, you know, I retire, I'll probably use this one to make a scenario on the Siege of Gabriella at the NBN Fu. Hopefully I'm an experienced enough player. So those are just kind of looking at some critical hit maps. Uh, 
people, I, I have no real complaints about the actual um, like quality of what's on the map, just the size is really, really awkward. So, um, this is what I keep my scenarios in. It's a uh, kind of like what a scrapbook from Amazon and they're kind of absolutely perfect. They have been all my answers from things. Stuff that comes from Critical Hit, I can actually cut and put in here, which is really, really cool. And then I can organize it by historical period or scenario book or, you know, whatever comes in. And what I really like about it as well, um, once again, you've got plastic on everything. So it's high quality. Um, it's gonna keep moisture out, which is a constant problem given that I do things in a garage. But what else is really cool here too is if I haven't sorted the counters yet, like I haven't for this uh, French Algerian historical um, squad leader module, I can just leave them in here and when I'm ready, I can pull them out and I know exactly where they are. Everything looks good, everything looks crisp. Uh, the only problem with these, if you have some stuff that's like unusually like large or something like a new to hit guide or just something out of the usual that's outside of that 8x12, um, you might have a problem uh, keeping them in. I'm going to show you a few other ones as well. I also just think they're really aesthetically pleasing looking. I'll put a link at the bottom um, on Amazon, not that I'm sponsored by them, uh, to um, purchase these just because I think they're so wonderful. So here's one here uh, representing the Arab-Israeli wars. I can fit all the supplemental chapter H notes for these and I don't get them confused, you know, with my main one and the rules are in there as well, which is pretty neat because I don't really want to mix stuff uh, that's so um, far from what MMP puts out there. It's all there and in one area for, you know, research and reference. Uh, this one's got really good chapter H notes. Um, I can't remember the guy who did this one, but uh, it was definitely a labor of love as I described in Desperation Morale. Uh, here's one that's got um, most of my American Vietnam stuff in it. Uh, just kind of cut up the fight for uh, Huey. Here's the newest uh, annual issue number six. So you can actually fit a pretty thick magazine in here. This thing's probably, uh, I'm not sure the page number is on here. It's um, about, I guess, 18 pages, but it, it's th it's a thick 18 pages and it all fits in there just super easy. Um, and he said like there's a new to kill to hit with this uh, newer um, eras in the war of war. So um, I fit that in there as well. There's your rules. Scenarios, easy to move in and out. Um, you got a top thing, none of it's permanently sealed or anything like that. And you just kind of go through it. And then on the back, I actually have room for another magazine, which is the one that came with the helicopter rules, annual issue one. So it all kind of fits into one, one module thing, not too much shoveling. I wanted to show one. Um, there's the Den Bien Phu one. I've reviewed, I've reviewed that um, more thoroughly than I need to. I want to show one that's got more just kind of MMP stuff in it. Uh, here's uh, Belgium, France, 1940s, so there's just a bunch of scenarios uh, from that historical era. I just kind of got this photo from the internet and put it in there. It's really wonderful looking. Um, it's hard to find some good photos of the French looking like they're kicking butt in World War II. I sometimes wonder if the Germans burnt all those. Um, this is some critical hit stuff for um, uh, France, 1940, Battle of Stone. Uh, the city changed apparently 17 times during... Uh, the German invasion. Um, let's move down a little bit. Yep, uh, here's the stuff that came with the new version of Crocs de Guerre. Um, failure to communicate. A lot of stuff that comes with Crocs de Guerre is uh, huge, huge um, uh, scenarios. A lot of them really big. Got some Belgium action going on. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Like I said, I kind of wanted to make this more of a laid back, quick, easy video. That's how I organize my advanced squad leader stuff. Um, I hope you hear back from other people and uh, maybe they make some content as well, kind of showing us how they do their thing. Uh, be sure to roll low and I'll see you in the next video I make. What that's going to be about, I got no idea.